let's talk about firewalls. Firewalls are absolutely critical on today's computer systems. There was a time a long time ago when we just didn't think of much about firewalls, but today, with all the threats that present themselves from a public network, you must have a firewall installed on your system. Let's talk about what a firewall is and how it works. A firewall is either a piece of hardware or a piece of software or a combination of both, depending on which type of firewall you're using and how you're implementing it, that sits between your network and a public network, such as the internet. We have our systems over here on our network. Then we have the great cloud of the internet. We need a means of protecting our network over here and our host systems, we'll label this internal, from this external network where chaos rules. If we did not implement some kind of barrier between these two, then anybody on the internet could find their way onto our internal network and could do all kinds of things. They could compromise data, they could steal data, they could bring systems down, all kinds of things. You don't want that kind of thing to happen. Now as a PC technician, I realize that it might be outside of your realm to implement firewalls to protect a network. That's usually the job of the network administrator. However, depending on what your job role is, you might be responsible for a firewall. At a minimum, you need to understand what a firewall is and how it works. And you also need to understand how a firewall can be implemented on a particular host instead of a network to do the same thing, to protect that host from the outside network. Now, I want to warn you about something. As a PC technician, if you don't already, you soon will understand how important firewalls are. But be aware that there are those in the companies that you might work for who don't understand firewalls and don't understand how important they are. Let me tell you a story. About two years ago, I was bidding a job for a client who wanted me to install a computer network for him. And given the parameters that we were working with, I said, you know, we could really cut your costs down by implementing a wireless network instead of pulling wire through the walls. We would dramatically cut the cost. You'd have the same functionality, etc." And this business owner said, absolutely not. I will not have a wireless network in my, in my office. And the reason was is because a couple weeks before, he'd been watching the news, and they had a, a, one of those spectacular news reports about how folks can sometimes get a hold of an unencrypted wireless network connection and use them and cause problems. And I tried to explain to him that's not a big deal. You can encrypt the data and so forth so people can't get it. And anyway, he wouldn't have any part of it. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, If you want to spend more money, we can pull wire. But then I started saying, okay, now your office suite connects to a backbone that runs through this office complex. And all the tenants in this complex connect to that backbone, and that backbone connects to the internet with a T1 line. We need to implement a firewall between your network and between this backbone, otherwise folks could come in and get on your network. He's like, we don't need to spend money on things like that. In his mind, it was kind of a network thingy that wasn't really necessary. It's just a way for me to get money out of him. He refused, he said, I will not put a firewall on there. We don't need it. And I refused to take the job. I said, I am not going to do that. Why? Because I did not want to be responsible for his network getting compromised without that firewall there. So, word of the wise, stick to your guns and make sure firewalls are implemented. It'll save your network, it'll protect your data. And that's one of your key jobs as a PC technician. Let's spend a little more time looking at how a firewall works. When we implement a firewall on a network, what we do is we place a system between our internal network and our external network. All the data that passes through this system is examined based on a set of rules that we define that determine whether or not that traffic is allowed. By doing that, we have erected a firewall between our network and the external network. In other words, we could say any data that originated outside the network that's trying to come in, do not allow. We say no, you cannot come inside. We can say any data that originated with a request from the internal network, for instance, if somebody said, I want to get this web page from this web server, we can say, okay, let's go ahead and allow that. We can say 
any FTP traffic coming through is not allowed because we don't want passwords and usernames being transmitted clear text. We can say data that's being transmitted on a particular port, such as port 80, is allowed through the firewall, but any other data is not allowed through the firewall if, it, if it's running on a different port. As you start working with firewalls, you will soon see that there are many different types of firewalls that you can implement. Let's first look at the difference between a network firewall and a host-based firewall. With a network firewall, we take a firewall device, it could even be a computer running firewall software, and we install two interfaces in it. One network interface connects to our internal network, one network interface connects to our external network or to the internet. All data going to and from the internet, it goes through the firewall and it uses the rules that we specified to decide whether or not traffic is allowed through or whether traffic is not allowed through. That is a network-based firewall. All networks that connect to the internet should, shouldn't say should, they must, must, must have some type of firewall. In fact, most folks who implement firewalls for a living recommend that you do layered firewalls. You don't use just one because if a hacker manages to find his way through the one firewall, they got full access to your network. They recommend installing layers of firewalls so that if a hacker gets through one, all of a sudden he's got another one he's got to get through and another one. In other words, making it not worth the effort. You know, go on and find some other network that's only got one firewall instead of wasting your time with this one. However, it is also possible to have a host-based firewall. With a host-based firewall, we have a single system is connected to the internet. And it doesn't matter how it's connected. It could be connected via a modem. It could be connected through a network. It could be connected through a DSL line. It could be connected through a cable modem. However it is connected, it does have access to the internet. However, instead of installing a firewall somewhere over here between the system and the internet, you have software installed on the system that operates as a firewall for that one particular host only. Now, a network firewall examines all traffic going to and from the internal network and deciding whether it's allowed or not. With a host-based firewall, we examine all traffic coming to and from just this one host and deciding whether or not it's allowed. Now, these two are not exclusive. In fact, most of the time when you're dealing with an organization, you will probably be running a host-based firewall on each machine. It comes with Windows XP. It's really nice. And you'll also be running a network-based firewall up here. Firewalls are absolutely critical. If your organization doesn't have one on its network, or if you don't have host-based firewalls running on each individual system, you should crank it up and get it going. Because without them, your systems are subject to serious, serious security threats. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about using firewalls to protect your network. We talked about